How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Joe. I'm from the Los Angeles office of DJI. Uh, so I'm going to go over just a lot of the basic uh, information about Mavic Air. So the Mavic Air is DJI's latest aircraft. It's, in my opinion, the most powerful aircraft we make uh, ounce per ounce. Uh, it is incredibly small, uh, compact, portable, designed to give you all of the power of the Mavic series in something a lot more portable. In fact, it's so small, I've had people coming up to me thinking, you know, I was looking at the Mavic Air because the Mavic Pro is just too bulky. And I, would n I never thought I would hear that the Mavic Pro is too bulky, because we all know when it was released, it was a game changer, you know, such power in such a small package. And the Mavic Air uh, does pretty much the same thing. So the Mavic Air has a brand new, more compact and portable design. It is foldable very similarly to the Mavic Pro. The propellers aren't foldable, uh, but non-folding propellers just means it's going to give you even more flight time. So that's not a uh, sacrifice uh, we made. It's got forward and backward facing obstacle avoidance cameras. Uh, it uh, is a lot more intelligent and it's got more intelligent features that utilize the more processing power like smart capture and new intelligent flight modes. It has a 4K uh, camera that can record at 24, tw uh, 25 or 30 frames per second and it can also do ultra slow motion uh, 1080p video at 120 frames per second. Uh, it accomplishes this with its 100 megabits per second uh, uh, recording rate. So even, even though it can do 4K like Mavic Pro, the 4K footage is going to come out even better. The camera is stabilized with a newly designed three-axis stabilized gimbal with a new vibration adamp uh, dampening system. So it's going to give you the stability we're all used to in something that's actually more durable than the Mavic Pro series because it is uh, built into the body of the aircraft rather than being separate. And there's local storage on board the Mavic Air. Uh, if you have flown a lot of uh, DJI aircraft, you may have found yourself in a situation where you are flying, you're ready uh, to take your shot, uh, everything is where you need it to be, you hit record, no SD card inserted appears on your uh, smartphone. Uh, so that's no longer an issue because you can record at about an entire flight worth of 4K footage with the uh, built-in uh, storage on board the aircraft. Of course, it uses a uh, micro SD card slot so you can uh, expand that storage up to 64 uh, gigabytes. The imaging system is actually the same sensor as is on the Mavic Pro, so we didn't make any sacrifices with regard to uh, sensor size. Uh, it's a, uh, about a half inch Sony Exmor sensor and it has a uh, 24 millimeter lens and about an 85 degree uh, field of view. With Flight Autonomy 2.0, which is our newly designed uh, system to take all of the uh, all your sensors on board and, and feed them into the uh, computing cores. Uh, Flight Autonomy 2.0 is uh, brand new, so we built all the algorithms from the ground up. So it has more processing power and it is able to use all the information uh, in much more intelligent ways uh, compared to Mavic Air. Uh, one of the most powerful ways is the APAS system, the uh, Advanced Pilot Assistance System. So. Uh, if you're familiar with the Mavic series or the Phantom or Spark series, uh, you know that the obstacle avoidance sensors are really powerful because they uh, help you avoid running into uh, well, obstacles. But when it reaches that obstacle, it'll most of the time just stop. Uh, but Mavic Air is intelligent enough to avoid obstacles uh, automatically. So whether you're flying it manually with a strip sticks or flying it with uh, intelligent flight modes, it'll intelligently fly around subjects. If it's flying uh, close to the top of a subject, it'll choose to go above that subject. And if it doesn't see a way above, it'll try to find a way around it. And it does this in real time and uh, full speed when you're in positioning mode. Using the new processing power, we've totally enhanced uh, and uh, made much more useful the uh, gesture control. So if you're familiar with Spark, you know that you can control it with your hand gestures. You can take off out of your palm. You could start active track with your hand gestures. But if you have any, if you've been flying it a while, you know that sometimes it's a little bit slow and you need to be really careful with your movements to make sure it's acting exactly how you want. Uh, Mavic Air is a lot more responsive. It has much longer range, 
uh, you can move in much more, uh, in much quicker movements, and it's going to respond even when it's at full range. I'm going to show you guys when we're outside. You guys are also going to have a hands-on experience with it, and you'll see immediately how much of a change is if you have experience with Spark. And if you don't have experience, you're going to be blown away with how powerful a tool uh, Smart Capture is. Active Track uh, also takes advantage of the new processing power on Mavic Air. Uh, so it is a lot more responsive. It's going to be able to keep up with fast, faster subjects, and it's actually intelligent enough to distinguish subjects even before you select them. Uh, usually you would need to uh, drag a box around your screen, or if it was a person, you could just tap a, a person. Now it is intelligent enough to track up to 16 subjects, or, or rather, uh, recognize up to 16 subjects, choose them before you do, and all you need to do is uh, tap on your screen, on the green circle that appears and it'll automatically start tracking. It is smart enough uh, to track quickly uh, moving objects. Uh, I was flying just the other day and I was above a freeway, not directly above it, but I could see a freeway and cars were driving by and Active Track uh, was able to track the cars as they were going uh, into, the, into the screen and off the screen, so it's really quick. Uh, quick shots, which were released on Spark, uh, and have now moved on to Mavic Pro and the Phantom series uh, have been uh, upgraded as well. They're a lot more responsive and can track you more accurately while they're in their, uh, the beginning section of the quick shot. And we've introduced two brand new quick shots, uh, Boomerang and Asteroid. Boomerang is a really cool shot. It will rotate around the subject, increasing the, the radius away from the subject as it gets behind it, and then decreases it as it comes back around. So you get this really nice cinematic re reveal shot uh, as it, it travels around the subject. And you can do all of this with, with just a few taps on your screen. Just like Active Track, it'll intelligently uh, find your subjects for you, and you just need to select the one that you need. It'll give you a countdown, automatically take, uh, fly for the shot, and start recording. Uh, this is my favorite new quick shot, Asteroid. What it does is, it, uh, similar to Droney, it will back away from you and up. And then at the top of its, um, at the, at the top of its flight, it will uh, take a 32 megapixel spherical panorama. And then in DJI GO 4, the app you're going to be used to uh, fly it, uh, it will edit your footage so it will take your uh, spherical panorama, you will ver digitally zoom into it and then it'll replay that footage uh, that it took when it was backing away from you reverse so you get this really cool shot where it looks like you're flying into uh, the mini planet. So you can take 32 megapixel uh, panorama photos automatically with just a single press of the button. It takes about eight seconds to take all the shots you need and it'll stitch it together automatically for you. You have the ability to turn your spherical panorama into a mini planet or you can uh, have it wrap around the uh, viewer so you can view it in a virtual reality and uh, look all around your uh, spherical panorama. It can fly for up to 21 minutes uh, on a single battery. The batteries are of course replaceable and you can swap them out uh, on the fly. Uh, in uh, sport mode it can fly up to 42.5 miles per hour. So that's even faster than Mavic Pro and because it's lighter than Mavic Pro, it has quicker acceleration, so it's really a pleasure to fly. Since we have so much room to fly out here, when you guys have a hands-on experience, uh, especially if you're slightly more experienced than a uh, beginner pilot, uh, feel free to click into sport mode and really get a feel for how quickly you can move around. Uh, when in positioning mode, so when obstacle avoidance is engaged, you can go up to 18 miles per hour. Uh, compared to 42, it seems slow, but it's more than powerful enough uh, and fast enough to capture some really great shots. It can handle 30 miles per hour of wind. It's not so windy anymore, which is great, uh, but even in the morning uh, when it was a lot windier, it was still giving no issue and was able to fly as if there was pretty much no wind. On a single battery, as I said, 21 minutes of charge. There are lock sensors, uh, so if the battery isn't inserted properly, it will warn you. Uh, and it takes about an hour to charge each battery. Uh, so it's a totally new design. It comes in three different colors, uh, red, white, and black. So far, the black has been uh, the most popular one. I think it is the more professional looking drone. The white is the classic and red has like a sports car feel. Uh, the whole drone, including battery, not including the remote obviously, is about a pound. So you can throw it in a backpack and totally forget that it's there because it's so small. Uh, it's, got a, it's so small when it's folded that this phone that I'm holding could uh, 
pretty much hide Mavic Air when it is folded, uh, when it is held right up to it. Um, I'm sure most of you have already seen it folded and unfolded. Uh, and it's just incredible how powerful it is for how small of a package it is. The remote is very similar to the Mavic Pro's remote. It doesn't have your on-screen telemetry information like Mavic Pro, uh, but it has all the same other buttons like sport mode, your gimbal control, photo, uh, video recording. I can hold uh, phones, uh, pre pretty much uh, any phone, as long as it's not in too thick of a case, it'll be able to, to hold. It can handle uh, iOS or uh, Android or iPhones. It uh, actually comes with three different cables, and so no matter what phone you're using, you're going to be able to uh, put it in the remote. When using the remote, you have a maximum range of about, of about 2.5 miles using a dual band Wi-Fi. You can choose 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz frequencies. And these thumbsticks are actually detachable. So if you have a Mavic Pro or, or a Spark, uh, you uh, may have a, ba a bag that is, would, would uh, be better suited for the remote if it had no sticks. Uh, so this was a, a great change for the remote. You just unscrew them, and there is a compartment in the remote itself to store the sticks, so it's pretty hard to lose them. You don't need a, a separate place to store them. You could fly uh, Mavic Air uh, with your smartphone. Obviously, your range is reduced and your maximum speed is reduced, uh, but if you're in an environment where you just can't bring your remote, you need all the space you can get, uh, then you still have access to all your intelligent flight modes uh, with your remote, and still a decent enough range to capture some really great shots. Uh, so to summarize, it's super compact and uh, portable. It's got a 4K camera. It can fly up to 21 minutes, 2.5 miles away. Uh, it, it can do uh, 4K, 1080p, 120 frames per second. It's got forward and backward facing obstacle avoidance. It's way more powerful. Uh, so smart capture is just really responsive. You're, you have new quick shots which can track you and take really great shots. So if you're not a great pilot, all you need to do is tap a few times and you could take footage uh, that only a great pilot uh, in the past would have been able to, to take. Uh, so the Mavic Air starts at 800 bucks. This is everything you're going to need to get up in the air. Uh, you don't need to get any additional accessories, uh, you know, uh, extra batteries, landing gear. Uh, you don't need anything more to get it up in the air. But it, if you're going to get extra batteries and other accessories, the Fly More combo at $1,000 is going to be uh, great for you. It comes with three batteries total. Uh, the uh, propeller guards a two cases, one that stores just the aircraft and one that stores everything that comes in the combo. You get a battery charging hub that charges four batteries, not at the same time like Spark, uh, but like the original Mavic charger, it charges one at a time. It intelligently chooses the battery that has the most charge, so you can top that one off first so you can have fully charged batteries uh, quicker than not. And it also comes with a really great adapter that uh, attaches to your intelligent flight battery and allows you to use a USB cable to charge any other devices you have, like your smartphone. So it tur turns it into a battery charging bank. Uh, so we're going to fly out there in just a second. Uh, if you're already familiar with how to fly DJI aircraft, uh, then this is going to be uh, information you already know. But if you're a first-time pilot, this is going to be the information you're going to need uh, to fly for the first time. So this is what you're going to see in the DJI Go 4 app. There's your live video feed at 720 or uh, 1080p uh, video downlink. Uh, the video that comes in isn't your full quality video. It's just the video that comes in over Wi-Fi. But that'll be saved on board your phone uh, in a cache that will constantly be rewritten if you have that setting turned on. But if you want your full quality video and photos, then you're going to need to either download it from the drone to your device or take out the SD card uh, and put it into whatever device can grab it. Uh, you have your flight time remaining at the top. You have your telemetry information, that's how far you are away and your height. Uh, your connectivity, so how many satellites you're connected to, how strong your signal is uh, to your remote, etc. Uh, you have all your photo control, so uh, your shutter, your start video, uh, your, your, rather your start and stop record, uh, all your uh, camera settings. And you have your auto land, your return to home, uh, and your intelligent flight modes all on the left. Uh, so Mavic Air, just like every other DJI aircraft, has smart return to home where if it disconnects from the controller for whatever reason, like if you lose line of sight, uh, it goes behind a building, uh, for example, 
or your remote just dies. If your phone dies, it's not an issue. Your remote's gonna still stay connected, but if your remote dies and you lose that connection or your battery's getting too low, return to home will engage. It'll raise up to a preset height uh, that you preset. So basically you're gonna look around and say, what's the highest thing I can crash into here? That's about 20 meters. I'll set my return to home default to 30 meters. Uh, the drone will raise up to that 30 meters and then come back to you in a straight line. Uh, and because Mavic Air is uh, so much more intelligent with its obstacle avoidance, it'll do a much better job avoiding obstacles on the way should something be in the way if you didn't set your return to home height uh, at the proper height. Uh, Geo is built into the DJI GO 4 app and uh, Mavic Air is going to be subject to uh, the same no-fly zones that help you avoid areas that have a lot of air traffic. Uh, so you can never, it's much harder to accidentally fly in areas that you're not legally allowed to, so uh, it gives you that uh, confidence uh, that you're flying uh, in, a, in a, an area that's uh, legally allowed. Uh, this is informational, uh, so it's not legally binding. So if you do happen to be in a no-fly zone, obviously that's uh, on the pilot. Uh, so the remote, this is the Mavic Pro's remote. Uh, again, the Mavic Air's is very similar. It uses a wired connection to your phone. So if you fly Spark, you may be um, sometimes frustrated with a Wi-Fi connection from your remote to your smartphone. Uh, Mavic Air, you'll be happy to know, uses a wired connection. Uh, so these are gonna be your control sticks. Uh, Mavic Pro has that telemetry screen. On the left stick, there's your camera tilt. Uh, you have your start and stop uh, record as well as your shutter, uh, your return to home button, your sport mode switch, which is on the front of the Mavic Pro and the device holder. To take off, you put the sticks diagonally down and in. That'll boot up the motors. Just like a car, when the motors are, are uh, you know, when the motor turns over, you let go of the keys. So same with Mavic uh, Air and all of our aircraft. When you turn it on, you let go of the sticks and uh, that'll make sure you're not uh, inputting any commands while the uh, aircraft is still on the ground. The left stick will make the aircraft ascend and descend as well as rotate. Uh, so with this stick, if you're a new pilot, this is going to be the stick you're going to want to start with because it's much harder to crash into anything, obviously, if you're just going up and down and rotating the aircraft. The right stick is going to make the aircraft move horizontally, forward, back, left, and right. Uh, you have to keep in mind though, that's the aircraft's forward. So if, for example, you rotate the aircraft 180 degrees, now everything is, from your perspective, totally inverted. So right is gonna be the aircraft's right, which is left, etc. Landing it, all you need to do is hold all the way down on the left stick, and it'll land safely. It'll pause for a second to make sure the ground is uh, suitable for landing, uh, as well as give you time to uh, cancel the landing. Let's say you wanna fly close to the ground, you need to be holding down on the left stick to have it land. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate smart capture. Uh, so I'm going to be using all of this space to demonstrate. So if everyone could do me a favor and back away towards the door. Uh, if you want to stay towards that wall, that, that's up to you. But I'm, the more space we have, the more uh, dynamic my uh, flight is going to be. So uh, to get into smart capture mode, uh, all I need to do is enter it on my phone. So unlike Spark, which can enter selfie mode in your hand, you need to activate it on your uh, smart device. So it'll select the subject that's close to the center of the shot. Uh, it'll intelligently uh, move the camera up and down looking for a subject. When in that mode, if you put your hand out in front of it, it'll detect your hand gesture and automatically take off. I'm not touching the remote at all. So it'll take off in front of you. And it'll move about seven, from five to 10 feet away from your hand. So if you're familiar with Spark, you know you have to move your hand about this slowly until it starts moving. But Mavic Air is significantly more responsive. So I can move uh, a lot more dynamically. And notice how much further it is away. Anytime I put my hand down, the front lights will turn green and it'll trigger active tracks, so it'll still follow me. So imagine I'm walking around, I say, hey guys, check out this cool view of the city, uh, but if you want, you could check out you know, this angle, check out that view, you can see everything in here. You know, it's just a really dynamic way of controlling it with your drone. Oh, sorry, with your uh, hand gestures. What I can do as well is control the distance. So I can just put my hand in front of it, move it, move it where I want. 
If I put my two hands together, it'll move towards me. It's about as close as it wants to go. And will line it up so it's not going to back up into anybody. Put my hands away, it'll back up. And when it's this far away, I still have full control with my hand gestures. So I'm going to move it above your guys' heads so it doesn't hit you. You can see how incredibly responsive it still is from this distance away. Again, I drop my hand, it'll still be tracking me. So this is on trace mode, which means it will uh, rotate to keep me in the shot and follow me. And if I walk towards it, it'll back away. Uh, I can put it in profile mode, which would make the aircraft not rotate. So if I were to walk left, it would move left to keep that same profile rather than rotate. To bring it back, just put my hands together. I could really easily take photos and video uh, just by putting, so photos, I just put my hands up like a peace sign. You can see it's taking a photo right now. It's way more responsive than Spark. Spark, sometimes you have to hold your hands out in a picture frame uh, for, you know, up to 10 seconds. But this is just a lot more responsive. And uh, to land it, all I need to do is bring it towards me. Apologies, there's a lot of uh, interference, especially uh, with the compass here. Uh, but I'm just going to re-grab control. You know, because of the interference, what I'm going to do is uh, manu manually land it. This isn't uh, an optimal uh, environment, unfortunately. The issue with this environment, there's a lot of metal underneath uh, this floor uh, because it's a roof, obviously. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, Wi-Fi signals going around here, too, but that's less of an issue. Uh, so in your normal environment, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, because I landed on the ground, I'm going to have to recalibrate the compass, and then I'll show you guys normal flight. Uh, and then uh, shortly after that, we can break off into groups, and you guys can have your own hands-on experience. I'm going to go ahead and try to take off from this brick wall. That hopefully will not give me any uh, compass issues. Yeah, so there's no metal underneath this wall. Uh, you guys can come, come, come closer now. I'm not going to be using this area. Uh, I'm going to be landing it over there, so you guys don't need to push off against the wall. So to take off again, you put the sticks down and in. It'll boot up the motors. I let go after I know the boot motors are booted up. I use the left stick to throttle up. And if I let go, you can see it's hovering right, right where I left it. My left stick will go up and down and rotate the aircraft as well. My right stick will move it horizontally forward, back, left, and right, and of course diagonally, any direction you want. There's nothing you can do to the sticks while it's in flight to bring it out of the air. You can be as aggressive and dynamic as you want, and it's not going to fall. I'm going to click into sport mode. You guys can see how fast it is. And during this whole flight, my video footage is still silky smooth and fluid. So I'm going to land it between these two tables. So if you're standing close, do me a favor and uh, take a few steps back. I clicked out of sport mode, so now it's going to have uh, obstacle avoidance engaged. Yeah, so it's uh, just overall really a pleasure to fly. Hopefully I can take off again right here without uh, calibrating the compass. Yep, should be fine. Now I'm going to show you uh, some of the uh, quick shots. Show you Asteroid, the one where it uh, takes a mini planet and then zooms in. It's really easy, fun to fly. So I'm going to rotate the drone uh, so it can see some subjects to track. I hit my intelligent flight mode button, go into, hit that little X, go to quick shots. It gives me a warning saying uh, it has to be in video mode. I'm totally cool with that. Uh, then when in quick shots, I can choose which quick shot I want. A drony circle, helix, rocket, boomerang, and asteroid. I'm going to show you guys asteroid. So once I click asteroid, uh, it'll, it gives me a warning aircraft a little bit too low. I go a little higher, maybe I can move it back a bit. Um, so all I need to do is uh, select my subject. And when I tap my subject, it gives me a countdown, three, two, one and then it automatically starts backing away. It's still active tracking me, so if I were to walk around, it would still rotate to keep me in the shot. But once it gets a little bit too far away to keep me visually uh, in the shot, it'll just start tracking the GPS location that it left. So at the very top of the shot, it should be about 120 meters from our takeoff point. It will start rotating around 
and start taking my 32 megapixel panorama shot. So it's doing this all autonomously. You can see there's a percent sign over there. <laughs> um, I, I could choose uh, what camera settings are better suited here. I just I, I didn't bother with camera settings yet. But it'll stitch it together for you. Uh, all the uh, photos can be viewed separately uh, if you want. The raw footage will be available as well. But in DJI GO 4, you could automatically, with just a single press, grab the edited footage that makes it look like you're flying into the uh, mini planet. And when it's done, it'll start coming back to us. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land it right when we're done. So again, just uh, step away from the uh, tables. And it'll stop pretty much right where it took off from. We'll rotate it so the battery's facing me, so the right stick is most intuitive. And I'll go ahead and land it. <laughs>